Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 33rd semi-annual commencement ceremony for Western Governors University. Graduates, families, and friends, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this special occasion. Our commencement ceremony is being recorded and streamed online. A special welcome to all of our participants joining us online from across the country and around the world. Please silence your phones and stand for the processional and remain standing for the national anthem.
dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Thank you, and you may please take your seats. We'd like to thank Shander Hansen from Meridian, Idaho, who is graduating with her master's degree in nursing, leadership and management for singing our national anthem. Good morning, everyone. It is my honor to convene the 2017 Summer Commencement Ceremony. On behalf of the entire university, we welcome our graduates and congratulate you on completing one of life's great achievements. We also extend our warmest welcome to the many family members and friends who are here to support their graduates. In addition, we want to recognize and welcome the many graduates who, together with their family and friends, are watching this event live via our live webcast. There are many others here to celebrate your success. We'd like to recognize Clayton M. Christensen, the Kim B. Clark Professor of Business Administration at Harvard Business School and founder of the Christensen Institute, who will address us shortly. We'd also like to recognize those on the stage, including our President Emeritus Bob Mendenhall, as well as our, the Honorable Governor Mike Levitt, as well as the Honorable Governor Roy Romer, and the Honorable Governor Jim Geringer. We'd also like to recognize the university's trustees, including Tammy Johns, Bob Evanson, uh, Terry Crane, David Simmons, and Joe Fuller. Standing here, I see the many family and friends. It is likely that today would not have been possible without their support. In fact, there are over 7,500 guests in attendance, and many more are watching online to celebrate you, our graduates. Would all of you, the friends and family of our graduates, please stand up. Graduates, let's make sure we recognize their support of you. At WGU, we often have family members graduating together. Could we please have these family members stand and be recognized? <laughs> WGU is also honored to be recognized year after year as a military-friendly university. We would, we would like to recognize our military graduates who are graduating. Would the graduates who are active duty, reservists, and veterans please stand and be recognized. <laughs> and last but not least, if you, our students and alumni, are the lifeblood of the institution, then the faculty and staff are its heart. With you today are many of our WGU faculty members and employees. Would our faculty members please stand up and be recognized?
This year, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of Western Governors University's founding. 17 years ago, we celebrated our first graduate, and now the university has more than 87,000 graduates, a number that grows every day. Today, we recognize the achievements of 10,488 dedicated students who have graduated since our winter commencement in February. Among these, 6,348 are receiving their bachelor's degrees, and 4,140 have earned their master's degrees. 1,144 of you are attending the ceremony here in person. You represent 47 different states and the District of Columbia. The graduate traveling the greatest distance to participate in commencement today traveled here from Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you for being here, and it is our privilege to be among all of you. first earn a college degree. We extend a special congratulations to you. Your average age is 39, the youngest is 18, and the oldest is 85. Ninety-two percent of you are over the age of 27. Those receiving a bachelor's degree, on average, you completed your degree in two years and three months. And among our master's graduates, on average, you finished in one year and eight months. Rituals and ceremonies play an important part in our lives. They separate extraordinary moments from the daily flow moments that have special meaning and should always be remembered. It is an inspiring and uplifting moment to look upon you and consider your achievement despite your many priorities and challenges you had to juggle to attain it. You are the reason that we have gathered here and for me, and for me personally, the reason I chose to join WGU. Today's commencement ritual is an emphatic punctuation that you, our graduates, have set and accomplished a significant goal and are moving to a new stage in your life. Since you join only 33% of adults in the U.S. who hold a bachelor's degree and less than 9% who have earned a master's degrees, much will be expected of you as you continue your life's journey, taking leadership roles in your businesses, your communities, and your families. It has been said that the door of history swings on small hinges. You have made the choice and put forth the effort to attain a milestone that will change the course of your personal history. You have set an expectation for yourself, your families, your loved ones. You have lifted your gaze and aspired to greater things. Never forget the privileges or responsibilities of your education. And finally, a sincere thank you for letting us, all of us here at WGU, indeed for letting me be a part of it. Congratulations. At this time, it is my honor to present an honorary doctorate of humane letters to Dr. Robert Mendenhall. Bob served as WGU's president for 17 years, leading the university as it grew and developed from a great idea to one of the largest universities in the country today. He joined WGU in 1999, before we had even enrolled our first student. He previously was a successful entrepreneur with 20 years of experience in technology-enabled learning, and he applied this experience in his leadership of WGU, and it helped ensure the development of our model as well as the university's viability. Over the years, Bob has earned the respect and recognition of higher education leaders as well as policymakers. In 2010, he received the McGraw Prize for Education, one of the most highly regarded awards in education. He has shared the WGU story with presidents, legislators, and administrators, securing both financial and regula regulatory support for the university. It's impossible to overstate Bob's role in the success of WGU. We are where we are today because of his singular focus on WGU's mission. Anyone who has worked with Bob knows that he has a very personal investment in our students. They are always top of mind for Bob. Today, we want to recognize Bob for his amazing achievement, 
being part of a revolution in higher education and helping so many individuals change their lives through education. Here, here's a short video that highlights his impact on, our WG, on WGU, our students, and our employees. To go from an idea with little capital and a lot of skeptics to 80,000 students in 20 years as one of the more respected institutions of its type in the world is a substantial accomplishment. Bob Mendenhall led the way. What struck me initially about Bob was how driven he was to create a truly excellent university. When I first met Bob Mendenhall, and my initial impression was I was expecting the traditional university president, but here shows up Bob in a golf shirt. And I was like, a golf shirt for a university president? But then I started to realize that uh, this was part of the WGU culture, if you will. That we are more technology driven, we're student obsessed, you know, we work urgently, we work collaboratively, and yet uh, we have still a little bit of that, uh, that, what, technology edge to us that takes away some of the formalities that didn't really have any business being in higher education to begin with. Bob proved that this was a very viable university and very essential and very credible. You know, Bob is uh, the real deal. I'd worked with Bob in three different companies before I came to WGU and I always appreciated his leadership. Those of us who have experienced this growth and success of university understand the complex and challenging but confident role that Bob played. You, you can tell that, that for him, this is, this is very personal. This isn't a job. This is, this is a calling. This is a mission. Bob's been a great partner, mentor, friend. And, you know, when you spend this much time together, there are things you pick up about the individual. And one interesting thing, one funny thing, I think, at least, is when he's dealing with a really stressful or hard issue, he puts his hand up here and he rubs his hair and we all know it and we learn to know if the hair was high you stayed away if the hair was low it was a good time to go in and talk to him well, i think bob will be remembered as one of the critical visionaries not only for western governor university's establishment but for the role that is making and changing higher education bob Congratulations. Um, it's been uh, the best partnership that I've experienced in my work life. I love you, I appreciate you, and we are here because of you. Bob, thank you for involving me in the dream. Thank you for allowing me the room to grow, room to be better than I ever thought I could be. Bob, as a friend, I congratulate you on your leadership of WGU and everything you've done to make this institution a first-class, wonderful example of what American higher education can be. Bob, thank you for your incredible commitment to our students, our graduates, to our employees, and to me personally. Thank you for your incredible vision and also your commitment to innovation and bring you about WGU. It is what it is today, thanks to you. Bob, I want to thank you for uh, the last 17, 18 great years of working with you. It has been a joy. It has been all my pleasure. It has been uh, an experience that uh, you have grown into not only a friend, but a deeply appreciated mentor. We would not be here without you. Um, WGU would not exist without you. Thank you for the friendship. More than what we've done here, you have been one of the remarkable friends that's populated my life. You've inspired me to do great things. You've shown me that uh, the Utah I believe in can achieve greatness, and you are at the pinnacle of Utah's greatness. We are, are so appreciative of the chance we have to be able to recognize you and thank you 
for not only what you have meant in our lives, but, but in the lives of literally tens of thousands of other students. Thank you very much. Bob, congratulations on all of us, but especially you having reached this incredible milestone of 20 years at WGU. Bob, thanks for your friendship, and thanks for all you've done to make WGU such a resounding success. We've had a great ride. If I may, can I have uh, our chairman, Jim Geringer, as well as Bob, join me up here at the lectern. Bob, today we express our deepest appreciation, love, and our awe at your accomplishment. It's an honor to, and a privilege to present you with this honorary degree, and our chairman, Governor Jim Geringer, will help me hood you, as well as present you with that degree. What a great honor and privilege for me. I have had the greatest job in the world for the last seven years. What hath made it so special as we have sought to build a university that would meet your needs and enable you to achieve your dreams. I now have a degree from my favorite university. I was going to apologize to you graduates because I didn't have to work for this degree, but then I thought about it and decided I really had worked for this degree. In fact, there were some really significant tests along the way as well. But it has been a joy and a privilege to serve WGU, certainly the greatest uh, job opportunity I have ever had in my life. It's a great thing to be able to choose a career and do something that you love, something that's meaningful in the world, something that makes a difference in the world and in the lives of individuals. And that's been my privilege over many years. Scott mentioned earlier that um, the door of history turns on small hinges, and as I was reflecting, on this experience here. I think the door of our personal history also turns on small hinges. Many years ago, at the age of 22, I was two weeks away from attending UCLA Law School when two individuals, Vic Bunderson and Dusty Houston, invited me to start a nonprofit institute with them doing computer-based education and training. This, I hate to admit, was well before the launch of personal computers. I decided to forego law school. I thought for a couple of years and go do this. I could always go back to law school. We ended up spinning off a company and taking it public and running it for the next 15 years. Our auditor at that company was an individual named Charlie Johnson. And years later, Charlie was the chief of staff to Governor Mike Levitt when they were looking for a new president for WGU. And Charlie recommended me, and for some reason, the governor accepted the recommendation. And here we are, 20 years later, with an amazing university. It would not have happened without the contribution of so many other people. People who loaned their, didn't loan it, gave their time and their money and their loaned reputation to an idea and a vision. Certainly foremost among those people would be our founding governors, particularly these three who are seated to my left, Governor Mike Levitt, Governor Roy Romer, and Governor Jim Geringer who not only had the vision for this, 
but invested their time and energy in making it a reality. They also helped raise all the initial money for the university, and a lot was needed. I remember contributions from Scott McNeely, the chair of Sun Microsystems, who spent an hour listening to this idea, pulled out his personal checkbook and wrote a check for $500,000. More importantly, he gave the names and phone numbers of other executives in Silicon Valley and elsewhere in the technology industry, many of whom ended up supporting the university. There were others, Tim McEwen at International Thompson Publishing managed to give us a $1.4 million grant in the early years. I think it was about two weeks before we would miss payroll. And in those days, it would support payroll for about a year. Um, certainly, I must mention Senator Bob Bennett from Utah, who led efforts in Congress to support WGU with federal appropriations. And Senator Mike Enzi of Wyoming, who passed legislation, who for the, which for the first time enabled distance education to be eligible for federal financial aid. Amazingly enough, that was only 12 years ago that distance education was made eligible for financial aid, partly because of the efforts of WGU. I must mention Secretary Rod Page and his Deputy Secretary Bill Hansen. Governor Levitt and I visited with Secretary Page when we had 100 students, no accreditation, a really good idea for a teacher's college, which Secretary Page gave us a $10 million grant to create the WGU Teachers College. You almost can't imagine that happening today. Later, Governor Mitch Daniels decided to create the first state-branded WGU University, naming WGU Indiana as the eighth state university which has since been followed by state universities in Washington and Texas and Tennessee and Missouri and Nevada. And Scott, I hope more to come. <laughs> Despite all of those people, not in spite of those people, because of those people, but even more significant would be the work of hundreds of colleagues at WGU who committed their career and their time and their expertise to serving students and to building a great university who dedicated day after day as mentors and in many other university positions in dedicating their time and efforts to the success of students. And ultimately, all of our success is due to you, students and graduates who chose to attend WGU and by your efforts have graduated Many have moved on now to significant positions in teaching and nursing and business and information technology <clears throat> and created the reputation which WGU today enjoys. <clears throat> Along the way, I developed a very simple leadership principle. There's all these books on leadership and certainly Clay Christensen is a master at it. But really, it boils down to treat other people the way you'd like to be treated. And if we use that principle with our employees, with our colleagues, with our customers, in our case with students, and with each other, things will work out well. In the end, it's people that really matter. And what I will remember most about my experience at WGU are these commencements and the opportunity to congratulate so many of you as you complete a long-awaited dream of achieving a degree and moving on to career success. Finally, I would leave us only with this thought, that each of us has much to be grateful for, and it improves our quality of life as we're grateful for the opportunities we have for the people along the way who have made a difference in our lives, who support us in our dreams and aspirations. 
Thank you all for all that you have done. I'm pleased to introduce Clayton M. Christensen, our commencement speaker today. Professor Christensen is the Kim B. Clark Professor of Business Administration at Harvard Business School and the founder of the Christensen Institute. Often regarded as one of the world's top experts on innovation and growth, Christensen introduced the theory of disruptive innovation and has founded a number of successful companies and organizations that apply these theories. Clayton has long been a supporter of WGU and the university's learning model. Please welcome Clayton Christensen. I'm honored to be with you today. As I have uh, tried to prepare my remarks, I realize that you and I have a lot in common. I was raised in Rose Park on the right side of the tracks in Salt Lake City. I went to West High School and graduated from there. At age 38, with four kids, I lost my job. And I was at a point in my life where I just needed to support my family better than we had before. And so I went back to school, hoping that it would lead me to a new career as a teacher. You have uh, had a lot of responsibility in caring for your family as you serve, as you study here. And uh, I have a family that I needed to care for as well. But oh my gosh, I am so grateful that I went to school again to get a better job and to be able to support my family in a better way. And so we do have a lot in common. I'd like to talk with you a bit today about smallness and bigness in mankind. In my profession, my job is to identify questions and puzzles and paradoxes that have not yet been resolved. And my job has been to resolve them as best I can. And one of the questions that I po posed at the beginning was, I wonder why success is so hard to sustain. So if you look across the sweep of business history, most companies which at one point were widely regarded as unassailably successful, a decade or two later you find them in the middle of the pack and often at the bottom of the heap. And so the puzzle was, what makes success so hard to sustain at the level of corporations as well as individuals? And I came to a strange conclusion, and that is what causes successful companies or people to fail is they have a small view of mankind, not a big view, and they look at the entities that are big and successful and try to emulate them. In the end, however, it's really people that start with small problems that grow, that become successful. So for example, a number of years ago, a company called Nucor built a plant. You see it on the left-hand side of the road as you go north near at Tremonton, and they had a new technology for making steel. They could bring scrap, melt it, and reform it into shapes. And uh, the only product that, that they could make in the beginning was rebar that is used to build uh, our inside of cement when you're building structures. There was another company in Utah called U.S. Steel. They had a huge plant in Geneva. And the people at U.S. Steel looked down at Nucor 
and their new technology. And all they could do was make rebar, which is at the low end. And it made no sense to them. And so they ignored it. But Nucor instead began making small products and simple ideas. And then they made it better and better and better. And as they got ever more capable, the reaction of U.S. Steel was still not to look at them down market, but rather to try to see if they could make even bigger stale for even bigger people. And ultimately, Nucor has been wildly successful by looking at the bottom of the market as a platform to grow. Some of you know a company called Toyota. When I was in uh, high school and college, Toyota was invading North America. But they invi invaded North America not with Lexuses, but with a rusty little subcompact called the Corona. And what they did was they made a car so affordable and accessible that the low end of humanity, people we call college students, could own a car. <laughs> and while, they, while, while Toyota was starting at the bottom of the market, General Motors and Ford had a different view of success. And that is we have to make even bigger cars for even bigger people. And they looked at Toyota coming from below and it made no sense to pay attention to them. And then Toyota went from a Corona to a Torola to a Tercel, Corolla, Camry, Avalon, Forerunner, Sequoia, and then the Lexus. And yet General Motors and Ford, framing goodness as success, couldn't see it coming until it's all over. And this is what I mean by the, the smallness of mankind, the view that we will only be success if we are better than them. And a much better way to view mankind is I might be better than them at one point, but what's different is they want to improve to get better. And taking that view, they might be good, but we want to grow and we want to be better makes a different view of mankind. And that brings a very different view of mankind, that a bigness of mankind. And the premise is very different. We might look at a person who seems to be better than I am, they know more than we do. But that wasn't always so. When we were born, we were all the same. And other people might have learned earlier than we, but if they learn it, we can learn it too. And we need to view our success not as a static view, but rather a dynamic view. If I can't do something, it doesn't condemn me to being mediocre in the rest of my life. Rather, it just gives me an opportunity to learn. At age 38, I learned how to be do research and to be a teacher. You guys, at the same age, have learned how to be accountants and nurses and engineers and business people. And I congratulate you. If you keep thinking about the, the view of mankind, that it's a dynamic view, that you can spend the rest of your life doing better and better, you will give, uh, you will bless mankind in many ways. Another element of the bigness of mankind that I think is important is that learning is not a static event, but rather learning is something that we ought to do for the rest of our lives. And it isn't entailing just focusing on us to learn and be skilled, but rather it requires that we teach each other and help each other as they try to learn. Because as we teach, we learn. And I think an important element of the business model here is that we, we help each other to be better. Another thing that's important for me 
as I look at the bigness of mankind is that uh, this is God's view of mankind as well. God did not envision that some of us would be bolted to the floor of mankind, unable to succeed, while others have flexibility and upward mobility. That's not God's view of mankind at all. His view in, is in the bigness of mankind, that but we can become what he is. And he's given that potential to every one of us. And that's why it's so important that we keep learning. He envisions that each of us can know what he knows. Now, as you can see with this color, I live in traditional higher education at a university called Harvard. And I'm grateful that I work there. It's a good school. But we, we have a smallness view of mankind. The minute you get the ACC or the GRE, it determines whether you can come and join us or you can't. We keep score. We figure out what is the average GMAT, GMAT and GRE for the students who go to Stanford and Yale and all of these other lesser known schools. <laughs> and we have, to, we have to keep score because if we have number, uh, bigger scare, scores, we're better than them. And in order to succeed, we have to be better than others. But that's not what bigness is, a, is about in any way. We need to help everybody keep learning for the rest of their lives so that we all can become the people that God wants us to become. And of all of the universities that I, I know of who have take, taken, uh, succumbed to the view of the smallness of mankind, there is one big exception and that is Western governors. Everything I feel with you is based upon the bigness of mankind. Everything that I feel is that it's dynamic, it's not static. People can learn for the rest of their lives. Many of you, like I, can choose to chase, take a different career in, in halfway through and bring happiness to uh, our families. And so I give my honest congratulations and gratitude to so many of the people here who have sacrificed so much to create this marvelous university. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to close by telling you how I learned about the bigness of mankind. One day, a number of years ago, I was driving to school and uh, about 6 a.m., all of a sudden, I had a feeling in my mind and in my heart that something important is going to happen to me, Clay Christensen. And there was no specificity about what that was. But it was a very clear feeling that I was going to be given a responsibility in the not too distant future. And uh, so as I continued to drive to work, I wondered, what might that be? And then a couple of weeks later, there was an announcement that somebody in my field was going to leave their employment. And I put two and two together and realized they're going to give that to me. And so I started to prepare myself and figured out what else I would want to put into place and who I asked to work with me. And then when the time came to announce who the person was, they chose another person and not me. And I wondered why in the world would they have done that to me? Because I looked at my resume versus his, and there was no question that I was better. But, um, and it put me on a, a, 
I, I just couldn't figure out what had gone wrong with me. And then after about two months of trying to figure it out, I had an in, uh, important insight, and that is that God doesn't hire any accountants in heaven. And what I mean by that is you and I, because we have finite minds, um, we have to aggregate in, in order to understanding what's going on. So in companies that I'm affiliated with, we send out invoices and we receive invoices many times every day. And we can't keep track of all of the individual uh, data in each of these invoices. And so thank goodness we have accountants. And they can add up all of those numbers and give us a single number that allows us to say we're doing better or we're doing worse. Because we have limited minds, we need numbers. And we have to aggregate things in order to get a sense of what's going on. And we have a sense, because we aggregate, that the world is organized in a hierarchical way. So that people who respire, uh, uh, in, they are, are responsible for bigger numbers, are more important in an organization than people who are responsible for smaller numbers. But then I realized that God has an infinite mind. And because of his capability, he didn't, God doesn't have to aggregate people and trans, turn those into numbers in order to understand complete, completely what's going on in this world. Because he has an infinite mind, he doesn't need to count us as numbers. Then I realized, oh my gosh, so if if that means that God only looks at people and not numbers, when I die and I have my interview with him, he's not going to say to me, oh my goodness, the, the, in, the important Professor Clayton Christensen from the Harvard Business School. God's not going to say that. Instead, what he's going to say to me is, all right, Clay, do you remember I put you in this situation? Can we just talk about what you did to help those people that you were with to become better people? And then if you remember I put you in this situation, then let's talk about the people there that you helped to become better people. And then if you remember I gave you five wonderful children, let's talk about what you did to help them become better people. And I realize that God will measure my life by the individual people who I help to become better people. That's the way he will measure my life. And when I realize that, I realize that I need every day to find opportunities to help people that I work with and study with to become better people. Because that is the way God will measure my life. And I want to congratulate you, first to the faculty, because you have such great opportunity to help the people that you work with to be better people. And you students who have worked to help the people that you work with to be become better people, you have chosen magnificent professions. And I thank you. God bless you. I pray that, we'll, that God will be with you as you try to become bigger and bigger and better and better people. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. I think he captures the essence of WGU and all of you. Now we have the privilege of hearing from two graduates. They are Kristen Gibson, a Master of Business Administration, and Aaron Bishop, a Master of Education in Instructional and Design. Please join me in welcoming Chris, first Kristen 
to the lectern. I'm definitely shorter than the doctor. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for having me today. So I have a question. Who here has ever been lost? Raise your hand. OK, OK. Nearly everyone. Wives, if your husband refuses to raise his hand, raise both hands. <laughs> OK, yep, that's better. If you're anything like me, then you've already been lost two times today just getting to your seat. Hello, my name is Kristen Gibson, and I get lost all of the time. I can get lost just about anywhere doing just about anything, using Google Maps, street signs, you name it. So it's no surprise to say at one point, or many, I felt a little lost in life. I've been working since I was 16 years old, and like any teenager, at first, it was a means to an end. I worked because I wanted to go to the movies, and if my mother said, with whose money, I wanted to say, mine. In my early 20s, I needed money for Taco Tuesdays and parking tickets. In my mid-20s, my cousin Susan told me about WGU. She was a graduate and told me to check it out. I half-heartedly wrote it down on a piece of paper, and true to my life, I lost it. <laughs> I'd been working small jobs for years, but it just didn't feel right. It didn't fit the idea and the dream that I had for myself. At that point, I knew that I was lost. I didn't know what to do or where to go. That's around the time I tapped into my personal compass. Some people call it the true north. Others can call it their true center. I didn't know a lot of variables at the time. I only knew how I wanted to feel. Valued, happy, useful. And I used my personal compass to orient myself. Two years after my chat with Susan, I miraculously found the paper and took a step in the right direction. So many of us had to explain what WGU was to our families, friends, and peers. It's an online school. Yes, it's accredited. Yes, the degree is real. No, I can't cheat. My life hasn't been traditional by any means working three jobs to put myself through undergrad, so why did my education have to be? It seemed pretty straightforward, until the first time I had to take a proctored exam. What do you mean they'll be watching me the whole time? <laughs> Wait, I have to put on pants? <laughs> but for each of us in this room, we made it work. Whether it was waking up at 5 a.m. to get some studying in, staying up late while everyone else was asleep, or printing out cohort, cohort schedules and guides from work, we made things happen. Whenever I did feel lost in, in a course, I again used my personal compass, who by now had a name and a face. My mentor, Jeremy Little. Life doesn't stop just because you're going to school and you're bound to get lost along the way. But I knew my mentor, Jeremy, would get on the phone and say, hey, this is where you should be going. I found myself reassured as I progressed through the degree. So by day, I'm a travel coordinator. By night, I'm sure he'd say I was Carmen Sandiego. I'm always on the move. Between scuba diving 100 feet underwater through a sunken airplane or being hopelessly lost in France, with my mentor, I was able to stay connected and keep up with my goals. When I started my job, it was only a temporary position. I had no idea what the expectations were or where it could go. Because of WGU, I was able to take what I learned in my degree program and turn a simple job into a stable career. 
Both the president and the CFO of my company quickly became impressed with my analytical skills and noticed that I was applying to my work what I was learning in school. I've since been promoted, given a supervisory role, uh, a raise, and asked to create an entire department around my individual position. It's the competence and the confidence I now have that's made me become invaluable to my company. I'm not lost anymore, in this sense, because of WGU. The compass can look different for everyone. It can be in the face of your child, the smile of a spouse, the knowing look of a parent, or the support of a friend. Whatever your compass is, it all guided us to Western Governors University along our path to our true north and beyond. Congratulations, graduates, we did it. WGU paved the way for me to live a life I never thought possible. WGU paved the way for my children to live a life far different from the life I experienced growing up. WGU paved the way in adequately preparing me for a career that I love. The home I grew up in was one that was plagued with addiction and poverty, trials and obstacles seemingly around every corner. My mom, a single mother of four young children had little to offer out in the workforce other than that of her GED. Money was tight and bills were paid according to their importance. Our schooling was essentially placed on the back burner. As a child, I had many extra responsibilities placed on me that centralized around keeping our household afloat rather than being able to focus on my academics. As I grew older, I lost myself and I developed an extremely low self sense sense of self-esteem. At one point in high school, I moved out of my house to escape the environment I was in, working part-time while trying to make ends meet and keeping my grades up was challenging, to say the least. Crunching numbers, I realized I could drop out, go to work full-time, and make more money to sustain my way of life. Not looking at the longevity of the situation, this is what I did. I dropped out. I dropped out until a lifesaver showed up, my teacher, Mr. Jones. He refused to give up on me. He refused to let me repeat the cycle. Mr. Jones saw my true potential and didn't want me to continue on without seeing it myself. He encouraged me to get re-registered. He took it upon himself to work out a plan with a school counselor. Knowing my situation, he also had the counselor discuss different options available to me to graduate a little early if I was willing to put forth the effort. Mr. Jones sent a clear message to me that day and that was that I was worth it. I wish this is where I could say I got my life back on track, but <laughs> it's me. My life is all about trial and error. Um, the second half of my senior year, I found out that I was pregnant. What was I going to do? How was I going to do it? When I told Mr. Jones, I fully expected a lecture of disappointment about my life choices, but there was none of that. He helped me figure out the rest of my schooling, and he did it all without complaint. I was able to finish my senior year just a little ahead of my class and obtain a full-time job with benefits in order to pay for all my medical expenses. Following the birth of my son, I had a job, but I did not have a career. I was struggling and I knew that my son deserved better, yet college seemed so far out of the realm of possibility. Growing up, I always admired people that had obtained college degrees because to me, that was something that seemed so rare. I had the perception that only certain types of people were able to successfully go to college and they weren't like me, they were better. They grew up in the most stable of homes. They were smart and intelligent. These were the people that had the resources readily available, everything that I didn't. I checked into it and quickly realized how demanding a college schedule was, especially with a little child while working full time. It seemed impossible. One day, I went back to Mr. Jones to visit him. I tearfully told him about the guilt I felt 
knowing the trials that I faced were self-induced, yet they impacted the life of my child. I felt like a failure. As Mr. Jones sat there with me and my son, he reminded me of all the strength and resilience that I had. He reminded me of all that I had already overcome. He looked at me and said something that clicked. Aaron, you can do hard things. After a failed marriage and attempts at other colleges, I heard about WGU. By this point, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a teacher. If it weren't for Mr. Jones, I wouldn't have even graduated high school. I felt if I could at least be one child to someone, that could be my way of giving back. Sorry, I'm kind of getting choked up because Mr. Jones, this isn't part of my speech, um, he is still so humble and insists that he didn't do much. But 14 years later, he's sitting here with his family in the audience. <laughs> I wasn't going to cry, he's going to hear about that later. <laughs> Earning my bachelor's degree in 2013 from WGU was one of the hardest yet most rewarding things I had ever done. Little did I know what I'd go through for my master's. My grandparents helped me with my grandchildren, or my grandparents helped me with my children. My ex-stepfather and his wife opened their hearts and home to me and my children while I was student teaching. Days were long, nights were short and breakdowns happened. I missed my children. I missed being a mom. But I can't put into words how great it felt when I was offered my first teaching job before I had even officially graduated. After being in the classroom for about a year, I had this insane idea that maybe, just maybe, I could go back and earn a master's degree. I mean, I earned my bachelor's, right? Master's gonna be that much harder. Yeah, I was wrong. Um, it was harder, a lot harder. There were many late nights studying just to have the alarm clock go off four hours later. There were many times my mentor, Manita, spent more than my allotted time on the phone helping me and encouraging me. I can be kind of bratty, I can be kind of feisty, and every time uh, I had a, I'm gonna call it a moment, she handled it like a champ. <laughs> Sometimes she even gave me some tough love, letting me know that I might have actually been wrong. Maybe it wasn't the evaluator's fault after all. <laughs> Many times she would say, Erin, you can do this. You can do hard things, just as Mr. Jones had so many years ago. Life has a funny way of throwing you curveballs. Often things don't go as planned. There probably isn't one graduate sitting in this audience that didn't experience a trial or a hardship during their schooling process. Life can also surprise you by bringing people into your life from the most unexpected places at the most unexpected times. Graduates, you are here because you branched out and allowed yourself to do hard things. Continue to shine and continue down the path of success. Feel proud. WGU, thank you for helping me through life's journey. Since graduating, I have been able to purchase my own home, different vehicles, take my children on multiple vacations where we get to create lasting memories together. And last but not least, I was offered a district position as a behavior specialist. I will forever be grateful and indebted to my cheerleaders along the way. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't be me. Congratulations to you all. This concludes the commencement portion of our ceremony. We'd like to thank our speakers and all of you for attending. We will now divide into two groups for convocation and the conferral of degrees. We ask master's degree graduates and their guests to remain in this room while we will excuse the bachelor's degree graduates and their guests to move across the hall to the grand ballroom, which is directly across the way. This is the order of the recession. First, we'll ask the stage party to lead the recession, followed by our bachelor's graduates, and then followed by their guests and family and faculty. The convocations will start shortly, so please proceed directly to the ballroom. 
Once the bachelor's degree graduates and their guests have left the hall, master's degree guests, we invite you to move closer to the stage. Will the bachelor's graduates please rise? Thank you. The stage party may also rise.
Welcome back, graduates, families, and friends in the audience, and everyone joining us online across the country and around the world. In this convocation ceremony, we will be celebrating individual achievement of each of our bachelor's degree graduates. It is a significant accomplishment, and we thank you all for joining us in person and live via the internet for this special occasion. Thank you. We will now recognize each of our bachelor's degree graduates. With the candidates for bachelor's degrees, post-baccalaureate degrees, and teacher preparation endorsements, please rise, including those of you watching by webcast, wherever you may be. Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the member governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree or endorsement you have earned to include the Bachelor's Arts, Bachelor of Science, or the Post-Baccalaureate Teacher Preparation Endorsement, with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left side of your mortar board. Congratulations on this important milestone of your lives. Please be seated and come forward row by row at the direction of the marshals to receive your degrees and be recognized individually. Campbell, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Erica Smith, Bachelor of Science, Business Information Technology Management. Sarah Christina Garcia, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. D.D. Villarreal, Bachelor of Science, Business Information Technology Management. Heidi Christiansen, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Kimberly Swanner, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. Edgar Lons, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Tiffany Verick. <laughs> Tiffany Verweger, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. Tamara Brown, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Candace Walker, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. Brianna Plummer, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Ronald Acevedo, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Tracy Pooler, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Claudia Ammon, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Gloria Rivera, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies.
Daniel Arnold, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Denise Rodriguez, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Michael Clark, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Annette Rushforth, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Robert Cook, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Allison Sanchez, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Justin Crossley, Bachelor of Science Business, Information Technology Management. Samantha Jones, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. David Donahoe, Bachelor of Science Business, Information Technology Management. Heather Fitzgerald, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. James Hall, Bachelor of Science, Business Information Technology Management. Chelsea Diffenderfer, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Timothy Kanklerowitz, Bachelor of Science, Health Informatics. Rachel Nielsen, Bachelor of Arts, Early Childhood Education. Sharikanith Iyer, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Kathy Young, Bachelor of Arts, Early Childhood Education. Yana Yuntila, Bachelor of Science Business, Information Technology Management. Veronica Bryant, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Brian Kershenick, Bachelor of Science Business, Information Technology Management. Paula Compton, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Jordan Lanneberg, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Delight Egbert, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. David Loosley, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Lauren Scow, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Bashir Manja, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Jessica Shoup, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Katherine McCarthy, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Samantha Stout, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Eli McGinty, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Aubrey Sudbury, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Greg Moretti, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Natalie Morrow, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Steve Rosnowski, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Jessica Harding, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. John Siemens, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Inez Michelle Best, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Karen Bain, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Crystal Bjork, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Luke Cleveland, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Kimberly Blacka, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Gregory Cowan, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Amanda Blazard, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Heather Frank, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Kelly Bliley, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Joshua Hall, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Ashley Bushell, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Cherie Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Rebecca Campbell, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Gladys Keith, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Barbara Coleman, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Christy Little, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Sarah Connor, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Cameron Perry, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Amanda Copley, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. 
Dylan Red, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management. Sharice Cordova, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Joseph Espinoza, Bachelor of Science, Sales and Sales Management. Sarah Crimmen, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Nate Jensen, Bachelor of Science, Sales and Sales Management. Tammy Davids, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Brandon Loftus, Bachelor of Science, Sales and Sales Management. Stacy Demars McFarland, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Reuben Butler, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Maria Denslow, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Alexandra King, Bachelor of Science, Health Informatics. Carrie Pankratz, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Patricia Mai, Bachelor of Science, Health Informatics. Jill Fraley, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Linda Rader, Bachelor of Science, Health Informatics. Amber Green, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Alicia Aguilar, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Aaron Hammond, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Amber Allison, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Sharon Kay, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Grace Acevedo, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Cynthia King, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Carol Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Nicole Lauber, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Tame Tapi Anj Ananji, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Shauna Lavalley, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Wendy Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Vicki Long, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Francisca Aneni, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jennifer Mansell, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Allison Aaron, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Tanya McNeil, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Emily Bars, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Megan Meacham, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Alicia Beckstead, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Dari Thacker, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Melanie Smith, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Melissa Tolbert, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Bernadette Bursett, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Michaela Tolman, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Tiffany Besh, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Leslie Pine, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Lacey Bolter, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Amy Villanueva, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Jamal Ubonis, Bachelor of Science, Business, Information Technology Management. Lori Vincent, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Tracy Boyd, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Sherry Meyer Legler, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Susan Leanne Bradley, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Amanda Moon, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Brenda Brake, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Julie Murano, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Michelle Brumfell Field, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Marlene Neff, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Gloria Buesa, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Megan Oliver Pena, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Caprice Burke, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Miranda Hale, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. 
Karen Charvin, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Elizabeth Cheney, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Laura Clemenson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Carly Dalby, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Megan College, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Joanna Gomez, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Robin Connor Yost, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Lisa Hitt, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Sherry Kreza, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Brian Lindsay, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Kim Doretta, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Brianna McGee, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Kalpena Deo, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kaylee Sims, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Janalee Dixon, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Carrie Smith, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Julie Doherty, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jill Smith, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Deborah Dominguez, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Julie Smith, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Tamika Edwards, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Laura Smith, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Sheila Belingit, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. April Swenson, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Elena Bashini, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. April Terry, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Sandra Franson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Stephen Frank, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Barbara Gember, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jennifer Garvey, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Jocelyn Godbold, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Julianne Hazlett, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. John Gonzalez, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Shanona Johnson, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Nancy Goff, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Taylor Jones, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Sunny Henderson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Tessa Verska, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Kim Henkels, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Erin Wardell, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Melanie Hertzfield, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Chantel Watkins, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Nina Ignacio, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Stephanie Weber, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Lydia Cano Fernandez, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Angela Weinzerl, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Devaney Caton Hall, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Ashley Whittinger, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Fagmamelia Amanzi Kenny, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Holly Worth. Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Christopher Lynch, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Carolyn Caldwell, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Maria Andrea Mallory, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Sherry Shippen, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Tara Massey, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Matthew Simmons, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Heather Maughan, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jeanette Simmons, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Amelia Ellsworth, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Lisa Tanner, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Katrina Hazlitt, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jason Mayer, Bachelor of Arts, Science. 
Abigail Dawn, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Margaret Mayer, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Monica Shriver, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Stephen Muir, Bachelor of Arts, Science. Natalie Castellanos, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Mallory Barr, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Shauna Erickson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Lauren Benedict, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Yelena Fischuk, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kelsey Blumberg, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Denise Fisher, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Melissa Brower, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Martha Mukua, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Danielle Conger, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Ashlyn Fellman, Bachelor of Arts, Educational Studies. Shauna Dunker, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Tiffany Lewis, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Lindsay Rasmussen, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Jessica Peterson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Laura Vigilante, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Kimberly McDonald, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Monique Wall, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Veronica McKim, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Katie Julander, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Joseph McLaughlin, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jana Kegler, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Cheryl Moore, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Tiffany Keone, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Angeli Nichols, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Amy Lake, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Danan Kirk, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Brooke Peckham, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Olivia Lanier, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jenny Rasmussen, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies. Margaret Lewis, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kathy Reese, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Sally Lute Lose, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Sierra Royal, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Kanoa Gesso, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Monica Rudd, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Rachel Palmquist, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Roger Schroeder, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Petya Papazova, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Cindy Brown, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Jennifer Parker, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Andy Carroll, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Sharla Peoples, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Stephanie Chakara, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Christine Phillips, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kenneth Tate, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Catherine Patonzo, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Rhiannon Wilkie, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education. Russell Powell, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kayla Allen, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Michelle Anaris Ramirez, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Ophelia Chenmani, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Kimberly Riesenberg, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jesslyn Christensen, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Phoebe Niabondo, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Brianna Dill Chester, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Lee Mae Salerno, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Stephanie Fairborn, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. 
Leo Cadi Toussaint, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Devlin Matoyer, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Darlene Schreider, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Ian McCullough, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Christine Scully, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Angela Mernan, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Bethany Sear, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Curtis Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Carol Sherman, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Heather Farmer, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Blanca Shields, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Brittany Wenstrom, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. April Tumod, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Cynthia Wiggins, Bachelor of Science, Accounting. Carrie Slyter, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. April Allred, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Stacy Thurlockson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Blake Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Brittany Tinsley, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Sarah Loney Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Melissa Nicolason, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Rebecca Andreessen, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Lucy Jogu, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jessica Arnold, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Maria Ortega de Vargas, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Brendan Bailoff, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Julianne Osser, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Angela Burhold, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Ashley Walker, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Wendy Buchelman, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Katherine Wasson, Bachelor of Science, Health Informatics. Brendan Booth, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Michelle Watts Cordes, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kira Havens, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Joanne Wilson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jody Heaton, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Christina Wilson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Sarah Hendricks, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Kate Yardley, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Brad Christensen, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Christina Zmeck, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Hillary Marissa Christensen, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Claudia Zundell, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Karen S.H. Curry, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Christy Robinson, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Matt Curry, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Sandra Rodriguez, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Adam Davis, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Kimberly Sanchez, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Holly Davis, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Jimmy Soria, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Trisha Drake, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Jennifer Sales, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Amanda Duhigg, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. John Clark, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Alan Dunn, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Sean Davis, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Nosley Easy, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Ron DeLand, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Eric Eggett, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Stacy Earl, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Melinda Litchfield, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Colby Earl, Bachelor of Science, Special Education. 
Justin Ford, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Chris Endicott, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Sean Fowler, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Melinda Tracy, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Christopher Garcia, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Mirut Trejo, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Michael Gourlay, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Brittany Turner, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Linda Grant, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Michael Vans Coy, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Laura Graves, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Juan Vu, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kirsten Gross, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Grant Smith, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Jesus Guerra, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Jeffrey Solis, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Brett Gutman, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Adam Steven, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Sheila Hall, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Rhett Wilson, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Dan Hammond, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. William Camara, Bachelor of Science, IT Networks Administration Emphasis. Valerie Harry, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Edward Campbell, Bachelor of Science, IT, Information Administration Emphasis. Colby Higginson, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Ryan Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. David Hilfbrun, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Courtney Asby, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Matthew Hinckley, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Jeffrey Bailey, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Rochelle Hoffling, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. James Barker, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Robert Holguin, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Colby Bell, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. John Hebner, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Lawrence Carlson, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Kyle Bryce James, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Ryan Baker, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Emily Jensen, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Christian Burbage, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Jacob Kuhn, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Douglas Chavez, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Jennifer King, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Brandon Elberg, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Jillian Christensen, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Richard Hosfurther, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Dustin Larson, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Thomas Graham, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Elisa Magana, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Grant Higgins, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Calvert Matthews, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Tyler Hitz, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Russell McDaniel, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Brandon Lewis, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Martin Mastralet, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Donald Morrison, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Abraham Miller, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Shadad Najem, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. Roger Miller, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Spencer Redden, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology. 
Rochelle Morrison, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. William Barnett, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. Vlada Naku, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Philip Gardner, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. Frank Nowazik, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. James Jackson, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. Michael O'Connor, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Matthew Mitchell, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. Carlene Ostrander, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Keith Pinster, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. Jared Palmer, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Brad Cantrell, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. Michael Robbins, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Stephen Carmine, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. Shauna Provost Suma, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Thomas Dewey, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. Hillary Rich, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Kevin Draper, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. Jamie Ross, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Latana Smith, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. Philip Sellers, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Randy Pierce, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. Spencer Shaw, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Russell Smith, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. Kimberly Shirtliff, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Brock Tenney, Bachelor of Science, IT, Networks Administration Emphasis. August Silverstein, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Caleb Tarleton, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. Todd Swear, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Michael Walker, Bachelor of Science, IT, Software Emphasis. Michelle Taylor, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Tulor Shung, Bachelor of Science IT, Software Emphasis. Tiffany Thornock, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. David Watt, Bachelor of Science, Software Development. Mark Titcomb, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Christopher Crake, Bachelor of Science IT, Security Emphasis. Julian Valdez, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. John McGee, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Rusty Vischer, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Ryan Merrill Johnson, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Sean Webb, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. John Miller, Bachelor of Science, IT, Security Emphasis. Kimberly White, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. J. L. Olmsted, Bachelor of Science IT, Security Emphasis. Terry Workman, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Weston Wilson, Bachelor of Science IT, Security Emphasis. Lindley Bateman, Bachelor of Science, Business Management. Laura Yardine, Bachelor of Science IT, Security Emphasis. Thomas Farmer, Bachelor of Science, Business, Healthcare Management Emphasis. Monette Santos, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. Cherry James, Bachelor of Science, Business, Healthcare Management Emphasis. Jennifer Rollins, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. Mary Bennett, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. Rachel Olson, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. Marva Lee Brewer, Bachelor of Science, Business, Human Resource Management. 
Ellen Olson, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Sherry Burke, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Jessica Moore, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Edward Boussier, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Fernando Martinez, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Ricky Crandall, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Rachel French, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Sophia Gallegos, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Kristen Hardman, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Jeremy Holt, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Janessa Labrador Lindsay, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Carolyn Lang, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Brandon Lyon, Bachelor of Science Business, Human Resource Management. Graduates, please accept our sincere congratulations. All of us at WGU are very proud of you, and we welcome you into our community of alumni, now 87,000 strong. For many of you, earning your diploma is the fulfillment of a lifelong goal. The academic degree you have earned at WGU will open doors for you and will allow you to explore new opportunities. But it's important to remember that commencement is not the end, it represents a new beginning. I encourage you to explore your dreams, dare to discover, and follow your passions. Whatever you choose to do, do it as well as you possibly can, and great things will follow. Learning is a lifelong journey, and one that is now a habit of both mind and heart. I urge you to continue the, your journey to reach out to others in pursuit of their dreams. Identify meaningful ways to contribute to your communities and neighbors, and, find, and help us find our way as a united country to a brighter pathway for our children and our children's children. Now, let's take a minute and celebrate with a selfie. You guys ready for this? All right, here we go. <laughs> As you celebrate on social media, please remember to use the hashtag WGUGrad. Please remain seated until our graduates have filed out. Thank you.